What's up everyone, my name is Alex, I'm one of the co-founders of MyInvestingClub.com and I wanna let you guys know about something special we're doing for our viewers on YouTube. So the most common question we get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did is we created a free two hour mentorship course for the brand new trader. It's gonna be available at MyInvestingClub.co. The link is gonna be right here. This is a free webinar that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they start. I also wanna let you guys know about something that's very unique to MIC. So if you have any questions about trading or you're curious about trading or you don't know if MIC is the right fit for you, now you can text our head mentor, Tosh, whose number is gonna be right here, and he'll answer all the questions that you have in less than 24 hours. Thank you and enjoy the video. All right, how's everybody's day or week? My week was so boring. I'm green on the week, but God, so boring. Like I did it. I mean, I had a solid Friday, actually. I had a solid Friday. I mean, my week for me, I, I've been starting my week on Friday mentally because it's like after like, I don't know, the webinar day. For me, my week starts kind of on Friday. Um, Friday was awesome. Monday, I didn't place a trade. Two, yes, Tuesday. Tuesday, I was green. Wednesday, I, I just... Wednesday, I was like kind of break even, and today I'm kind of break even. I only won two out of the five days, didn't trade one of the days, and break even the other two days. So today, we are going to be talking about why your lines aren't hitting and how frustrating that can be and what to do about it. So I, I literally, like, this is, I, I mean, I probably get a call. I probably get, I'm sure every mod in here gets at least a call like this, um, something along the lines of this every single day, you know, about like, Dude, like, what is it about my lines? How come I, they don't hit at all? Like, it, you know, the thing about lines, guys, is not all lines are going to hit. And you guys know that. But, like, if you're constantly always missing, then there's something wrong. And so we're going to talk about that today. So the market sentiment first, and then and then I'll, and then I'll, we'll bring you on. On the fly, I, I, I'm pretty sure Vic is a line trader, right? Just a, a straight up, like, Faye, like, is a straight up classic line trader. Um, so it'd be probably good to get his his opinion on on hitting the lines too. So yeah, so last week, where were we, right? Last week, it was kind of like a watch out above themed market, right? Just everything was just ripping. And, and that's, and like we talked about last week, that's kind of the, um, that's a tell when, when the, when the bullish, when the bullish market is getting a little out of hand, right? You can't say he has darn it. That, that's when the, that's when the bullish market is kind of getting a little bit out of hand, right? When we get that, that blow off range, that blow off volatility, we're like, we're starting to see these 500% movers and just multiple, multiple hundred percents every single day. And I mean, they're just, the range is just expanding. It's like a parabolic move on the chart. So, you know, we were, we were in that kind of strong bull market and um, like, it, and then we started, and then on Friday we had those three faders and like, I even thought like, you know, at Friday that's, you know, it'll be the tell if we get a lot of faders on Friday, it'll kind of be the theme for this, like this week's market will slow down. So, you know, so, like I wrote, finally getting the much needed retracement on the spy on the COVID second wave. The question to ask was how much was priced in, right? If, you know, if a lot of it is priced in, it was a good, great dip buy opportunity, which now that we have a week's hindsight, it was because the market definitely bounced off of it. Um, if the cases continue, I think the, 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 the reflash, the fear area is 280s, right? And I thought that small cap bullishes prevails, but it's gearing, um, it was getting weary of its ability to continue. And I'm going to be looking to short the weak stocks this week, which um, I, I was trying, I was kind of trying to do this week. So this week's market, you can see like the, the kind of, I should, I should keep a couple. We kind of fit this kind of pattern here. I feel like we're kind of in a, in a very light seller's market, not a strong seller's market, but a light one, right? But we were also in kind of a light buyer's market too. It wasn't, it wasn't low float mania by any means, right? Like for those of you who know, like low float mania is when every single day you have like five low floats. It doesn't even matter. Like just, it doesn't even matter. There's no news. Just anything with the low float just pops up 200%. Like we weren't in, like that's a strong bullish market. We weren't in that market. So we're kind of just, we're kind of just along the edge. It's just a moderately ranged market. Um, I do think we're on the sell side though. The range has decreased a little bit from last week as shorts have regained some dominance. And that's kind of normal, right? In a bullish market, you're gonna see range a lot bigger than in the small, in the than in the than in the bearish or markets, right? Because when stocks are in a bearish market, um, range can only be defined on the upward part of the range. It's not like a stock's gonna gap up 30% and then tank to minus 50%, right? That's not gonna happen. Range is gonna be defined by how bullish a stock is. So 
like the stronger the bull market, that means the stronger the sell market because like they need to like when the when stocks go up three hundred percent, now we can it can come down three hundred percent, and that's how the range you know you're gonna see stronger and bigger range in those buyers markets than you are in the smallest in the sellers market, and that's why when we start to see those blow off type that volatility that range start to get kind of parabolic that's why range is a really good indicator of where you are and what's to come anyway so shorts this week regained some dominance they kind of overtook the helm a little bit and i think that was very indicative on friday when we got those faders um one thing i really like about this market is we're still getting a bull a day but we're seeing more faders than continuations of these bull market of these bullish stocks right and so the action this week um you know, last week re reclaims were like, you know, all the merry, like every single day, like you, like shorts couldn't trust anything Like you had to nail and bail. This week's reclaims are not as, you know, they've been very hard to attain. The reclaims have been stuffing. I've been very, I haven't taken a lot of reclaim trades this week, which is normally kind of like my favorite ish kind of trade to take, but I haven't been taking them just because I just know that we're not in the market for it. Right. And so like actually did it today. There was a time there was a stock today. What was it? I already forget. It was AM, AMD. Like, I mean, I, there, there was a lot. Actually, we can go over it right now. Or like, there's a lot right here where um, right around here, this is where the stock's like going to reclaim if it's going to reclaim, right? It's going to just like pop, make a higher low. Here's a second attempt where like, if we were in a bull market, I'm buying right here, but no way right now. Like we take... And the, then you get this other time where you get back over VWAP and stuff and VWAP and stuff. And like you can get chopped out of here like three, four, five times. And eventually maybe you are right, but here you're going to like buy here and sell and buy here and sell. And it's so easy to get chopped up here. And this is why you don't want to be anticipating this kind of crap here. Wait for confirmed strength and then look for the dip. And that's what I did here. But that's kind of like if I'm going to be longing anything, that's what I'm doing. I'm waiting for confirmed strength and then I'm buying the dip. All right, I'm not at all going to be aggressive as a long in this kind of market. But other than that, um, we're seeing resistance like try to hold a lot harder. It's a shorts basically, when we when shorts gain more confidence, what what happens in the market is when like on, an, on a specific scenario, when a stock goes to push VWAP, actually there's one right here. When a stock goes to push VWAP, actually I was short, I was short for this one, right? When a stock goes to push VWAP, by the way, I was so mad at the stock today. Uh, I was mad at it from the second it just tanked at the open. But anyway, when a stock pushes VWAP like this, it, you know, like it's going to like, it'll, it might like test and play like it wants to hold. It's going to do that in every kind of market. VWAP's going to try to hold. But in a shorts dominated market, this kind of secondary push, shorts are going to be less afraid like I was of this push. Now this, this very near, like my stop was 25. It went to like 26 20, and I was close. I had my finger on the exit button. But I'm like, you know what? This market's really weak. The stock had a huge tank at the open. Let, you know, like I'm going to move that stop up to 30. And I'm really glad I did. Now, I, I didn't make a good trade out of it, but because that's because I was so pissed at it. But like, this is the kind of situation in a very specific scenario when you're in a shorts dominated market, you're going to see shorts be more hesitant to fall for it, right? To, to fall for that trick, right? You're, and you're going to see buyers, you know, like it, get more fearful and less demand is going to go into those pushes in the first place. So it's all kind of self-fulfilling. And that's a specific example of how like when it comes down to the moment of like, is it going to continue or not? Shorts are going to, you know, by not covering, they're going to be placing, they're going to be helping the stock not continue, right? It's, it's all, it's like a team effort. So anyway, we're seeing resistance try to hold a lot harder like that scenario, right? Long seem to be, you know, more afraid of dumps in those dump areas, and we're seeing harsher drops from the contested areas. And when I when I mean contested areas, I mean areas like VWAP, right? Areas like, you know, oh, we just went over prior close, like, and we're consolidating. But longs might be too afraid, and they're, you know, they're going to see a harsh drop from that contested area. Yeah. So the pattern, it's basically been stuff city like this kind of week. Like besides the crazies, and what I mean by the crazies is. The thing about the crazies, guys, what I deem the crazies, I'm talking about the IMRNs, the JFINs, the, the CARVs, what was the one today, or the UONEs, right? Those are what I deem to be crazy stocks, meaning they are, they have, they're so illiquid, they have so much range. Yes, a whole lot of money can be, can be made, but the other, the, the other day, maybe yesterday or a couple days ago, I posted something kind of mean in the chat, but like, I didn't mean it to be mean, but I did mean it to be harsh. 
what I, what I said was, I said something on the lines, like if you lost on, I don't know what, 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 whatever the crazy stock of the day was, if you lost on this stock today, it is your fault. And what I meant by that was it is, yeah, car, it is your fault. Meaning it, I don't want, like there, there is, should be no scenario when you're trading these stocks that you ever in the slightest get into your mind saying, oh, this truck, this stock traded really weird today, right? This stock traded really weird. Oh, it was very different price action. Absolutely not. Th that like the, the kind of stocks that are carved, this is completely 100% normal price action for a crazy stock like this. You know, this is absolutely normal. You know, like we're like it just like it has this epic tank, epic tank again, and then climbs all the way back up here, has this major drop, but snaps right back. Like I'm sure this candle was annoying for some people. I can just tell, right? This is absolutely 100% ex needs to be expected from this crap. Well, thanks guys. Thanks for showing up. Peace out. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.